I used to be very lonely, painful times. So you have no idea. I used to walk the streets looking for people to talk to. I love you. You've always been Michael Jackson on stage. <laughs> I guess. Yeah, that's true. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a hard situation. It is. And it's something I have to put up with. <laughs> it must be hard to have real friends. Yes. You often seem very lonely. Is that, is that true? I used to be very lonely. Painful times. So you have no idea. <laughs> I used to walk the streets looking for people to talk to. When do you feel lonely? When do I feel lonely? Uh, I mean, I can be, you know, usually in hotels when there's thousands of friends chanting, you're out in the street, you know, using sleeping bags, and they're chanting how much they love you and everything, and you can't get out, you feel trapped inside, and you just cry, you feel lonely, you know? And there's all that love out there, but still, you really do feel trapped and alone, that you can't get out. And if you go to a bookstore, if you go out, if you go to a club, which I don't like clubs, you know, every book you buy, they wonder, why are you buying this? Why is Michael Jackson buying this? Why is he reading this? Or you go to the club, as soon as you go in there, every song is my song, as if I want to hear my music. <laughs> and everybody starts chanting for me to dance. So it, it becomes a show all over again. So you can't go anywhere. So wherever you go, you, you know, that's not much of a life, is it? I know. It's difficult. And, it's, and I don't want to complain like I'm complaining, because it comes with the territory. But I don't think people understand the other side that comes with it. So they're so quick to call you strange and weird. But it's almost as if you're forced to be different. Because it's, it's not normal life, you know? You've been so successful, and you've amassed so much wealth. You never need to work again. And yet you don't seem to be able to enjoy it. Um, it seems that you're restricted somehow. I enjoy it to my children. I enjoy it. But I'm it. talking about you. Um, you just don't seem to enjoy it. Enjoy what? Enjoy your success. Enjoy your wealth. It's hard to... In I can enjoy it behind my gates. But I can't go out and enjoy it because it becomes work all over again. So... When I look at those tapes of you, and heaven knows that putting this together, I think I've seen every piece of video ever done of you. And watching those tapes, when especially in the younger years, you seem to really come alive on stage. There's something going on with you when you were a little boy on stage. Were you as happy off stage as you appear to be on stage? Well, on stage for me was home. I was most comfortable, and still most comfortable, on stage. But once I got off stage, I was like very sad. Really? Yes. And sad from the beginning? Sad since it first started? Since Lonely, the Lonely, sad, having to face with popularity and all of that. Uh, there were times when I had great times with my brothers, pillow fights and things, but I was always, I used to always cry from loneliness. You did? Yes. Beginning at what age? Oh, very little. Eight. Nine. When you all first became famous? Yes. So it wasn't um, what it appeared to be to the rest of the world, all of us. I remember I was a little black child, wanted to marry Jackie Jackson, your brother. <laughs> so, I mean, to all of us, we thought this yeah. was the most wonderful thing in the world. Who, who wouldn't have wanted that life? It is wonderful. and it can, it, There is a lot of wonderment in being famous. I mean, you travel the world and you see things, you meet people, you go places. It's, it's great. But then there's the other side. There's a, which I'm not complaining, there's lots of rehearsal, uh, and you have to put a lot of your time, mm -hmm. give up yourself a lot. Once you're surrounded by 
your family, by musicians, by people wanting to be your friend. You were an international superstar. How can you say you had no friends? Because those people spoke to me on a language on another level that was musical, that was entertainment. But to get away from that, to separate oneself from that, and to try to discover the fun things about life. I can do the normal things, uh, go to the store and buy a piece of bread, a piece of candy or something. He can't do that. So that would cause you to become a recluse or to sort of be withdrawn. Do you not sometimes wish that you could go to the local store and of course. buy yourself some food and come back or of go course. to a bar? Of course. I want to go to the market, like one of those markets, and take one of those carts and throw some food in there and go down the aisle. I would love to do that. Can you do that? No. Of course not. Of course not. <laughs> I tried and uh, every, the whole place stops, you know, and everybody's chanting and getting your autograph and it, it's hard. It, it doesn't work. As I said on one of the, um, one of my interviews, it's my dream to go in a supermarket and just shop and be like everybody else and put things in a basket because I can't do it. Because if I, when I try to do it, people crowd around you. They want autographs and they want you to sign things and take pictures. That's why I love disguises so much. I could sit on a bench at Disneyland and see what people really do and talk about. But when, when they see it's Michael Jackson, they change. I don't see the real thing you know it's so i, I want to see the real world what it's really like and it's very difficult and in talking to us michael at least confirms one of those myths that he dons disguises to slip unseen into the real world i like to sneak into theaters without being noticed sometimes um sometimes there's really nothing you can do about it it's the price you have to pay well i've heard sometimes you, you turn up in the most unexpected places to your friends dressed in but they don't even recognize you. I have incredible disguises. Uh, I, I can fool my own mother. And uh, I enjoy doing it because I get to see life the way it really is sometimes, which is fun. That's why I love putting on disguises. One of the disguises Michael would wear in public was from his music video, Ghost, a makeup process that took several hours and would turn him into a completely unrecognizable and very large white man. I'd sit on a bench at Disneyland, a fat school. I'd sit there and I'd learn, I'd learn, I'd learn, I'd learn so much. Watching people, studying people's characters. And that's what I like. I like going inside. So a good friend of mine who, who owns this mall, he had them close a whole shopping mall. And um, he uh, had people in there that I knew pretending as if they were shopping. So it felt like... You know, it was a real environment. Had my cousins dressed like they were bag boys, and I, I went, I went shopping. It was great. It was a lot of fun. It gave me a chance to see, in my way, kind of what the real world is like, even though it wasn't the real thing. <laughs> When you have such intense scrutiny, how do you live any kind of normal life? How do you, you know, have any fun outside of your own property? I don't. I go off property sometimes, but not all the time. I create my world behind the gates, you know, because I can't go to the local movie theater down the street or the local park down the street or go pick up ice cream at the market, at the corner store. So you want to create that world behind the gates. And um, that's what I try and do. And it's not just... Uh, for me, if I could share with my family or friends or whoever I do. Nope. And that necessity for some privacy drives all these, uh, these, th these crazy rumors and speculations. So it's a difficult balancing act that you have to endure. Yes, yes. It's part of what comes with celebrity. You know? But you're not complaining, are you? I no. don't. I try to, you know, <laughs> rub it off. Not that I'm the... I don't know what I'm the king of. <laughs> king you know, of getting shot at me. No, 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 no. <laughs> king of journalism. Tell me why you developed Neverland. Because I wanted to have a place that I could create everything that I, that I never had as a child. So you see rides, you see animals, there's a movie theater. I was always on tour, traveling, you know, and, uh, 
I never got a chance to do those things. So I compensated for the loss. Right? I have a good time. I mean, I can't go into a park. I can't go to Disneyland as myself. I can't go out and walk down the street. There's crowds and bumper to bumper cars. And so I create my world behind my gates. Everything that I love is behind those gates. We have elephants and giraffes and crocodiles and every kind of tigers and lions and, and we have busloads of kids who don't get to see those things. They come up, sick children, and enjoy it. They enjoy it in a pure, loving, fun way. Many people made fun of me with my animals, you know. If I come home from a hard day at the studio and I come home to my deer or my chimps, and I can hug them and they don't ask you anything, they don't complain, you know, they don't gossip. They just want a hug and some love and, and get on with it. You know, where's the pizza? Get the, whip out the ice cream. Because the chimps, they love snacks. Dancing is about feeling, not about thinking. So when they count, they're thinking. Chimps feel, become the bass, become the drums, become the guitar and the strings. You just become a oneness, you know? That's very important, but that's real. But that's Michael Jackson talking as a performer. I love performing. But that's not... I wish I could sleep on stage. But, but that's not Michael Jackson the person. Well, those were very sad, sad years for me. And, uh, and why so sad? Because on stage we see you performing, you're getting your Grammys. You're... Why so sad? Oh, there's a lot of sadness about my past life and, you know, adolescence and my father and all of those things. It just made me very, very, very sad. Ah. Uh -huh.